Welcome back to Drive Your Thoughts Podcast. I'm your host, Master Coach Carrie Marshall, and it's time to go after those goals. Yeah, whether ready or not, life's coming hard, no breaks, no stop. And if you put me on the spot, don't get it twisted. I never drop. If you feel a bit out of control and out the box, here's a way that you could drive your thoughts. Turn this podcast on, it's a lock. Carrie Marshall. Hey, welcome to Drive Your Thoughts Coaching. I am so excited for our guest today. I want to introduce you to my new best friend, Zeal. Oh my goodness, I love this. <laughs> okay, I Zeal, title. <laughs> I'm gonna have you introduce yourself because, and then I'm gonna kind of add some of like what I love about you and why I really wanted you on the podcast. So take it away, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, so I'm originally from Brazil, grew up in the big, one of the biggest cities in the world, right, Sao Paulo and studied business administration, moved to the U.S. about 20 years ago. I stopped to think about this, and I was like, has it been that long? 20 years? Time has just started to go so fast as I've gotten older, right? Uh Uh-huh, yes, yes. And I was like, okay, I know I look like 18, but I'm clearly not. (laughs) After about 21, I just stopped Uh counting. So then, you know, 21, and then 40 hit, and I was like... Oh my gosh. And now somebody's like, how old are you? I'm like, I 40s. I'm like, I really can't remember. Uh Uh-huh. Yes, I love that. I'm in my 40s too. 40s, just 40s. Perfect. Yes. And I'm a coach. So I coach coaches. I help coaches grow their businesses or even get started. And that's my mission because there are so many women who they want to do something, they want to put their work in the world, and they know that coaching is a perfect route for them. But they don't know how. So I'm here to help them to figure out the how. (laughs) Well, and that's so powerful because I think that a lot of times, you know, we might get the training for, and I see this with a lot of different professions, we'll get the training for the thing, right, to be a coach. But I remember being like, okay, I'm a certified coach. I have no idea how to run a business. And so with your business background, that's got to be really helpful to be able to say like, okay, now that you know that you want to be a coach and you want to help people, now let's kind of get into a business and make it actually a viable business. Yes, yes, absolutely. And I think that's something that has to be so clear for anybody who wants to build a coaching career. Because coaching is fun, and I love coaching. But got to go get the clients, right? And then, you know, build it. So two different things, two different skill sets. Mm -hmm. Well, and I always say, like, I remember I had never done marketing before. And, you know, getting over that hump of like, I'm not, I don't know how to do this. And I've never done this before. And then realizing like, that's not going to help me, Uh Uh, you know, and I have to go out and find some people to surround myself with that are going to be supportive of getting the business going and actually understanding what it takes to build a business. So I Uh love that. Okay. So I want to kind of tell people a little bit about you from my perspective. Uh, Zill is one of those people that walks in a room and instantly lights everybody up. And it is just so fun to be able to watch you in spaces because it's almost like watching a bright star walk around the Aww. room because I can just see as I hear people, you know, we were at a conference together that I was speaking at and you were attending and I would hear people like start laughing or, you know, start connecting and really talking and I'd look over and there you would be. And then I'd hear it over here and then I'd look over and there you would be. And so it was really fun to be able to see that. But the other thing I love about you is you're kind of an adrenaline junkie. I am. <laughs> Oh my God. What do you think it is? Tell us a little bit about the things right now that are lighting you up as far as your hobbies go right Uh now. Yeah. So if you follow me or if you, you know, if you're in my world, you're going to see me at the gym at five in the morning, sometimes 4.30, 5.30 early, right? I'm up and I'm going. Getting it in. Yeah. So that's me. And then um, our family is really big into airplanes. So my husband is a pilot and he, you know, flies a lot of, you know, private airplanes. So we are flying places and my daughter, who's 16, is also into flying now. So that's part of the adrenaline, flying small airplanes. It's not like flying like a Southwest (laughs) airplane, right? The, The small ones, you either love them or you either despise them because, you know, you you truly have to feel like safe inside of them. 
and uh, motorcycles. So love riding motorcycles. So we, our family, you know, itself, we do a lot of stuff that you know, brings a lot of adrenaline. And I guess I just go with the flow. I love it. I guess <laughs> I'm just there for the ride of, you know, whatever is filling us. Let's do it. Yeah. Yeah. And the experience that you're having, I think that that's been really fun. Um, I've loved watching how you have included your kids with all of these adventures that you guys are doing. And, you know, um, I, I saw like a post about you guys skiing. Uh-huh. And, you know, it just seems like it's something that's not just you, but it's almost like the family affair of like all of you are kind of that way, which is yes, super fun. Yes. 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 We take a ski trip. So there are things that we, boxes that we check. So there is that, you know, at least one ski trip per year. And the kids start skiing at two. They're all, you know, yes. And I have stories about skiing, but maybe we can do another. <laughs> We're going to have to have an entire oh podcast. Oh, my gosh. I actually it would be, that would oh. actually be really fun. So I, I uh, was a snowboard instructor for about 12 years. Oh the my stories goodness. I could tell you up on that mountain, so much fun. Oh, my gosh. So just real quick, because this is, this is of value. So as I, you, as I told you guys, I grew up in Brazil. So there was no snow in Sao Paulo. And I came up here to the U.S. I was already married. We were living in Seattle. And my husband was a big-time skier. And he, and he still is. And he's like, okay, I'm going to introduce you to skiing. I was like, okay, let's try this. My first run down the, down the hill, I just took a guy out. I was going down the hill, and this guy from so Seattle, there were a lot of engineers from India, especially, because, you know, um, back then was Boeing and Microsoft that recruited a lot of those engineers. And he was right there. So it was either him or the pole. I was going down. I was like, okay, do I hit the pole? Do I hit the guy? Do I hit? And I said, the guy, of course. So I go and I hit him right on, like, the middle. He flies to this, you know, to this guy. His wife comes saying, you are going to kill my husband. Oh, my gosh. It wasn't. It, it wasn't pretty, but you know, I really think it was the best choice between the pole. And yeah, the if guy. we have to decide between a pole and a guy, the guy's gonna oh move a little, you goodness. know. But yeah, that pole, that's so funny. I always tell people because I do have that background in you know teaching people to snowboard. I always say I can spot out a couple, a husband, wife, boyfriend, and girlfriend that are trying to teach each other a mile away. Uh-huh. You're <laughs> and like, I always oh, say, oh. I always go, that's not the best idea. The best thing you can do for a loved one is get them a lesson. <laughs> yes. Okay. You guys have to write this down. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so you're actually in Utah. Where do you live in San Diego? Area? I live in San Diego. Okay. Mm-hmm. So you're here in Utah to speak at a business conference. So tell me a little bit about this conference because it's kind of very unique. Yes. And the fact of, I mean, we were just talking about it before we started the the amount of sponsorship that's around this, the people that are coming from around the globe. Tell us a little bit about this business conference and why you're so excited to speak at it. Yes, thank you so much. So this is really something that it's it's going to change the whole business world for Brazilians. So it's a conference for Brazilian people. It's it's called the Momentum Brazilian Networking. And we have so many business owners coming together. A lot of them are Brazilians. A lot of them are not. So if you look at the page of the event, I don't even know how many sponsors we have. But people are coming on board. People are coming together. And the whole idea is to create this strong network of business owners so we can support each other, hire each other, refer each other out, and Teach everyone, because if you're thinking about immigrants or, and immigrants are very, in in a sense, they're like anybody who wants to start something new. Because as an an immigrant, you come here and you are starting something completely new, right? So let's say you are here, right? You're, You're born here, but you want to start something new. This applies to you. So when you think about, I want to achieve my dream, start something new, but I don't know how, or I don't even know if that's possible. And then you see people doing those things that inspires you and that shows you that it's possible for you. So the whole idea is to show, you know, mainly our focus is the Brazilian community because we're all Brazilians and we, you know, you know how it is. I don't know when (laughs) Brazilians and Latinos get together. We want to show them truly 
that they can achieve so much and that we're here to support each other. Mm -hmm. And of course, this is just, you know, going to grow. It's going to grow and encompass the whole community. But yes. It's so fun. And I think that it's it's going to be so, like you said, empowering to be able to create a network of business owners from Brazil that, like you said, it's looking around and saying, who's doing what I'm doing or um, who is a resource that I can use? Um, I was talking to somebody else that immigrated here and she was we were talking about business and I said, well, the best part about the US is that anybody can do anything. And she said, mm. yes, but <laughs> she said, uh -huh. think about if you were to start a business today, she said, who do you have to call? And she said, it might be your dad's best friend. It might be your neighbor. It might be somebody from your church, right? And she said, when I moved here, who could I call? And she mm. said, not anybody. And she said, but then I had to work really hard to make connections. And she's like, it's totally doable and possible. But she said, there's a difference when we come and immigrate to the U.S. versus actually living here and then going out to start a business, get into college, all of these different things. And she's like, but being able to have people that know our culture, know our community. She was from Haiti. She mm. said, and being able to have a small community where we could actually talk about like, where the hard points are. Mm -hmm. She's like, that was really powerful. So I love that this conference is happening. Yes, yes. And I'm so thrilled, you know, to be one of the speakers. There is a really good lineup of speakers. And I, I think it's going to be not only inspirational, but I believe it's going to be life changing. Mm -hmm. Because every time you sit down, and I remember when you spoke at the conference I attended, and how much I wanted to meet you, because you had something special and I felt connected with you. And those things, they change you, mm -hmm. right? They change you. So this is going to be transformational for sure. And so um, one of the things that we were talking about is one of the main points that you're going to kind of talk about is using intuition mm -hmm. within your business. So talk about why intuition is so important for business owners. Oh my goodness, I love this question. Okay, now, <laughs> now let's go, Zia, <laughs> let's go. <laughs> okay, here is the thing, right? People can grow businesses in so many ways. And I've seen people grow, growing their coaching business with paid ads, without paid ads, with a list, without a list, this way, that way, that way. And for you to find yourself, you cannot just think that I'm going to do this thing because you worked for Carrie. Therefore, it's going to work for me because you might be out of alignment. And when you're out of alignment and listen up, guys, procrastination right now, what I can tell you out of, you know, all of these pieces I'm putting together, procrastination is mainly a lack of alignment mm. because when you're not aligned, you do not get into action. Mm. So if I'm looking at building a business exactly the way you built and thinking that's the way that's going to work for me, I might not be passionate about it. I, you know, it might be an early riser and I might be the type of person who likes to sleep in and work from my bed. Would that work? Absolutely. So when you are you and when you grow into being more of who you are and embrace you, and let your intuition guide you towards the path that it's gonna help you develop and put your work in the world, that's when the magic happens for you. Mm -hmm. And we are here, we might be building our businesses completely differently and having success as long as we are letting that intuition guide and being so courageous to take the steps towards the direction that intuition is gonna tell you to because it might not make any sense. And a lot of times it doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. right? You're like, okay, do this, step into this. And you're like, no, this is not how we do this. This is how we do this because you know this is how so-and-so built it. Mm -hmm. And this is how a guru tells you to do. And it feels so uncomfortable to do it your own way. Mm -hmm. And and you know, we all want to we want to be part of the group. We want to be saying, you know, oh, the paid ads worked for me too. But when it's out of alignment, like you said, mm -hmm. it just doesn't make sense for us. And when we, as soon as we get in alignment, it just starts clicking. And if we can just allow ourselves to like know that we know what we're doing, even mm -hmm. if we've never done it before, 
it it changes. I loved how you said that procrastination is just you knowing that you're out of alignment. Mm -hmm. Because I think about those things that when I, you know, we talked, I talked to my clients about like, well, what about this? Or what about this? When they're excited and it's in alignment with them, I don't have to check in. I don't have to like say, Mm -hmm. did you get it done? It's like, it's done. I did it in two days or whatever. Right. But when it's out of alignment, the procrastination for sure comes in. And it's like, I don't know why I can't do this Mm -hmm. instead of seeing that it's just an alignment issue. Yes, absolutely. And when you're brave enough and courageous to follow the voice of your intuition, you're going to find joy. And once you find joy, of course, you run with it. Not to say that you'll be so easy, but it's a different feeling. It's a whole different feeling when your heart is in it. And, you know, you have to go through the experience to know what this feels like. And I really want to invite your listeners now to give it a try, right? So right now, and who are your main clients? Who are the main clients that that you coach? Yeah, so I coach mostly people that are doing kind of these bigger goals, you know, going after a business goal Mm -hmm. or going after a personal goal. Uh But they're people that usually have had some success in the past, right? Uh Uh-huh. But it's that next level. Okay. And it's really interesting because a lot of them are really scared and nervous because they are seen as successful, Mm -hmm. right? So they're the ones that are maybe coaches or business owners that other people are looking up to. And so when they go to do the next goal, they get so nervous Mm -hmm. because they think, well, what if I fail in front of people? Because Mm -hmm. now I have a followers, I have employees, I have Mm -hmm. people that are counting on me. Yeah. So it's really interesting because they stop listening to that intuition because they get nervous about it. Yes, yes. So that was exactly my point, right? You have to trust yourself at such a high level that even if the first few steps don't look like it is the way, you still have your back as you go and follow that path. So fear might be there, but there is a lot of joy as well. Mm-hmm. And there is a lot of flow mm-hmm. when the work is done that way. Why do you think that we fear using our intuition? Yes, because it doesn't make sense. Mm-hmm. That's why. It does not make a lot of times. It makes sense and you can see the end. But many times the intuition will give you nuggets and they come in small portions. Mm-hmm. So it'll be like a nugget, like an intuition, like a little signal, whatever you want to call, mm-hmm. to do something. Mm-hmm. And you don't understand why. And it doesn't make sense why you do that. So, yeah. Are you going to take the time to do it? Are you going to put yourself maybe out of your comfort zone to do something that doesn't make sense and you don't know why? And I think that's why people stop Mm -hmm. because they don't trust that. They don't need to know why. Mm -hmm. They don't even need to see the big picture. All they have to do is to follow the small nuggets they're getting and let, you know, let that lead their way. So when was a time for yourself where you followed intuition, where it didn't make sense, but it did pay off for you? Oh my goodness, being here. Are you kidding me? When I saw you on stage, I truly connected with you. And I think that's why I'm here. Because you had a different energy. You were, of course, very knowledgeable and the presentation was stellar. But there was something more about you that I was curious about. And I was like, this lady is different. Like, something different about you, right? And then my intuition told me, go meet her. And I said, but, you know, I'm going to go meet her. What am I going to say? So then you start, right, guessing. Mm-hmm. Second, Second guessing. guessing. Mm-hmm. I was like, okay, whatever. I'm just going to go meet her. Tell her my name. You know, she's a human. She's nice, clearly. She was on stage. So you try to rationalize it. But anyways, I went in, introduced myself, we met, then we found ourselves online, and I'm here recording the podcast with you. Which is just so cool, you know, to see all of those different connections and to be able to say, like, it came from one thing of intuition Mm -hmm. that I said, okay, 
I'll, I'll follow. I'll go. I'll, I'll go and do the thing. Yes. You know, today on your story, I really loved because you were flying here to, to Salt Lake, to Utah. And one of the things that you said was, um, I want to give out 10 compliments today before I get on the plane. Mm -hmm. And then I want to find one person to help. Um, you know, and, and you kind of said like, number one, the compliments have to be genuine. Uh -huh. I, I can't just go out and cause you passed 10 people. It would have been really easy to be like, love your luggage, love your shoes, uh -huh. great smile yes. and go check, check, <laughs> check, check. But you said this has to be genuine. And I loved how, when, before you got on the plane, you said, I've given out six and is it a failure or is it not? Mm. Because I was like kind of going back and I was like, which one? Is it a yes to that, you know, it was a failure? But then how you talked about it and how you said genuine connection and genuine comp compliments and, mm -hmm. and being able to just know when that intuition hits that that's the person. And I was like, definitely a success. Yes. When we can follow intuition and not just the, check the checklist. That's where the genuine success comes from, right? Yes, yes, absolutely. And it was so interesting this morning because I had some extra time at the airport. I was dropped off earlier and I had two choices. One was to be on my phone, which is what I think everybody does. Uh, the majority of us do. Right? Yep. <laughs> or grab a book. I had a good book. Yes, that's could, mine. Yes, that, that's right. definitely Go mine. <laughs> or I could connect with people mm -hmm. and put myself out there. And really, that's how I share my business as well. Mm -hmm. And my mission is to help people. And I know there are people at the airport right now, any airport you go, who are trying to build a business. They're there, right? Mm -hmm. So I thought, okay, this sounds like fun and a way for me to be connecting with other humans mm -hmm. and also practicing my own skill to talk to people, to maybe explain what I do, to help them a little. And one of the guys that I met, uh, older gentleman, he was wearing Vans, and I loved his Vans. He was probably 80, wearing Vans, and my teenage girls love Vans. So I had to compliment him on, on his Vans. And he ends up that he works in the leather industry, and he makes beautiful pieces, custom-made um, leather shoes and purses. And I was like, that's what my dad did. Oh, my father was, you know, an artisan, part of, you know, we had, we had many businesses growing up. But one of them was, you know, building, creating beautiful custom-made pieces out of leather. And my dad passed away two months ago. And I was like, oh, my goodness, what were the chances that I would find someone who has the same craft, who brought me so many warm memories? My heart was so warm to be talking to that guy. And to know that somebody on the other side of the world does the same thing that my dad did at one point in his life. And that was incredible. Well, and to think how many artisans are out there probably that do that. And uh -huh. the fact that you guys happen to be in that same exact place. And to realize that being on your phone or reading the book, that would have been a moment that had passed, a person that had passed where you didn't get to connect. Yes. What do you think it is about connecting with people that lights you up so much? I love their stories. Like this guy, I loved, you know, hearing about how he moved from Washington, D.C. to another place, how he met his wife. Because when people connect with you, they open up mm -hmm. and you see beauty. Everybody has beauty inside of themselves. Everybody has their stories to tell, to share. And I love knowing where they came from, what they did, what their mission is, what they, this lets me up. Like knowing people, knowing that we are here on earth, so different, but so the same, mm -hmm. so alike. Yeah. And yeah, so I love that. I love that aspect of getting to know them mm -hmm. and ultimately helping yeah. people in, you know, in any way I can. So I have a lot of coaches that, that listen to the podcast and, you know, besides listening to intuition, how would you, what would you tell coaches is a couple of things that you've seen help coaches actually run businesses? Yes, that's a great question. So first and foremost is what is your big why? That's so scary, Carrie. 
That's so scary. And I was thinking about it today. I was thinking about niche, mm -hmm. which truly, you know, having a niche helps you to scale, but you don't need a niche to start, no. right? So we can go, we can have a whole podcast just on niche. <laughs> we really could. But, right? but I think you and I agree that that's not something that is the thing to like start your business. Like you don't get uh -huh. a niche and then hit the go button. Yeah. You no. can just hit the go button, everybody. Absolutely. So make note of that, everyone. But... Sometimes you know what the work, what your work is, right? You know what you truly want to do, but you don't think that, oh, those people are going to pay me. Or you don't think that people are going to take you seriously. Mm -hmm. Or you think you're going to be exposing somebody. I don't know. And I see that blocking people, coaches especially, from truly getting to flow. Mm. So to build a successful business, I would say jump into your mission, understand what it is and embrace it. Mm. It might be a bit scary at first because you have to work with yourself mm -hmm. and you have to overcome your own self. But that's the way, that's the path. Imagine that a year from now, you are serving the very people that you wanted to, how fun would that be? Would that be worth it, right? So that's one thing. The second thing is to believe that there are people right now that are ready to work with you. Mm -hmm. And I, when I see coaches not showing up or doing a lot of busy work or consuming a lot, it's because they lack belief that there are truly people out there who would take them, off on the, they, them up on their offer and be successful, actually, you know, by following their method or, or whatever. Mm -hmm. So those two things are huge for, you know, for coaches who want to progress and, yeah. and keep going. Well, and I see, like you said, I, I think that what you mentioned was so big, which is if you knew that people were out there and that they were ready to work with you, then wouldn't you be willing to have a couple of people say no? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I think that yes. what we do is we get into the, like, I'm all in, I'm going to do this. And then we have five or six or seven people say no. And then we're like, maybe I was wrong. Maybe instead of really focusing on that's okay. Uh -huh. Like I, that's not a problem. I'm still looking because there are people out there that really want to work with me about the thing that I'm really passionate about. And if we can just remember that, then it doesn't matter how many no's we get. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. I remember starting my coaching business. I was coaching men. I really wanted to start specifically coaching men only. Uh -huh. And I remember having a couple men say, you know, like, who's going to want to hire a woman? And men don't do coaching because mm. it was so far long ago. But I just remember thinking about there's there's at least one out here. And when I got that first client, I would always like imagine in my head when people would come at me like, well, that's dumb or nobody's going to want to. I'd imagine my client standing behind me. And then I had two. And then I had four. Oh and then I had 20. And I just remember uh -huh. believing and thinking about my, my men, my clients that were standing behind me and thinking, I'm willing to... Get anybody t com coming at me saying that no one wants to coach with a woman. Men don't need life coaching. Nobody wants to talk about their emotions. Men don't want this. Uh -huh. And I just imagine those men and I would say, that's okay. I can take your no. I can take your judgment uh -huh. because I do have these guys behind me that absolutely it's changing their lives and their family's lives. Absolutely. And the path to a yes is paved with no's. Yes. You might be super lucky that, you know, your first offer is a yes, but you can be sure that there are going to be some no's in the way. And that's the game. And yeah. it's okay. That's exactly how it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. You're going to have yeses and no's and you just keep going mm -hmm. and stay close to your vision. I remember being at the beach and I, I it was a really hot day. I had taken my 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 slippers off, my sandals off, and I was walking on the beach and it got so hot. And so I was like running, right? Running oh, wow. to the water. <laughs> but my mom said, "Isn't it funny that we have to use, we have to have the sand in order to get to the water?" Wow. And I was and that it like clicked right there. I was like, "The sand are the nose so that we can get to our yeses, which is the water." Uh -huh. And I said, "Sometimes the nose are hard, sometimes they hurt, sometimes it's painful." Mm -hmm. But are we willing to do it in order to get to where we want to? 
Absolutely, right? Yeah. And also the focus. If you focus, when I did marketing and I did some outreaching as well, I played a game every day. And my game was the game of 20 no's. I had to get out there to do my outreach. And my goal was to get 20 no's. They were crazy. Weren't, aren't supposed to be selling and getting yeses? Yes. But it was so much fun to get the first no because I knew the no's would come Check. every day. Yes. Right? Every day. I was doing a lot of out outreach. And I was like, oh my gosh, my first no, that's amazing. I'm just 19 no's away. Two no's, 18 no's away. Oh my gosh, I'm getting there. And then after the fifth no, you get the first yes. So I'm counting the yeses as well. Mm -hmm. But it was so fun to know, Zill, you are putting yourself out here. You are getting those no's. You're so brave. You're so courageous. You know that you're getting better explaining mm -hmm. what the program is when I was doing outreach. You know you're getting better at talking to people. You know that you're getting to meet, you know, to, to grow your network. So there are a lot of things that, you know, are actually present mm -hmm. that the no's give you if you're willing to accept them as presents. Mm -hmm. The people that I met who were no's who later were connections for yeah. other things. And as you keep going, you're for sure going to get your yeses, for sure. Well, and that kind of goes back to like, I see that with you, with your business is that you gamify things a lot. You know, uh -huh. you'll you'll come up with a, a small game, you know, oh, I have to do 10 compliments or I have to get 10 no's or, and so how do you keep fun in your business as mm -hmm. you continue to grow it? Yes, that's it. I play my own games. I come up with my own like silly games and Yes, I have stories too, but as like games such as walk into the grocery store and say, there is someone here who would love to work with me and I'm going to walk away from the grocery store with a consult scheduled. And going to the grocery store to get your groceries, to buy my own groceries and to be on the lookout. I'm like, who's that person? That person is going to find me. And for sure to connect with someone mm -hmm. and to say, well, we can talk some more. This, ha this is a true story of this lady who was, you know, new at her position prof in, in her professional career. She was young. She was lacking a lot of confidence. And she was standing behind me. We start talking. And I know what questions, by now I know what questions to ask to lead into, you know, to lead them to share. And if they want to share, great. If they don't, that's fine too. But anyways, she was in very low confidence and she was leading older men, women who had more experience than her. And I'm like, we need to talk, right? Coaching is going to help you raise your confidence. Mm -hmm. And back then I was doing general life coaching. So mm -hmm. anybody was my client, truly. And she scheduled a consult. And I was like, wow, how does this work? If So, the, yeah, I keep fun. the fun that way. Well, and I think that that goes back to what we talked about in the very beginning, which is that intuition. You know, that game in the grocery store could have been anything. Uh -huh. It could have, once again, been compliments or it could have been something else. But to follow your intuition to, like... It, I'm going to find somebody to work with and book a consult. I mean, that's that's pretty brave to be able to do that. But to follow that intuition uh -huh. is is powerful. Yes, yes. I think I've been doing this for so long. And I didn't even know mm -hmm. that that's what I was doing because it felt so natural. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you find yourself in flow. And another way to make it fun is to collaborate. Mm -hmm. So... Any opportunity you have to be, you know, to meet up with people for lunch. I love doing lunches with, you know, local lunch coaches. Lunch dates are the best, aren't they? They're so fun. <laughs> or invite someone, you know, on my Instagram. Yeah, it's my or, favorite way, yes. too. Yeah, I like food and new uh -huh. people. Like, yes. let's go. <laughs> yes. So that keeps things, you know, super fun. Well, and as coaches, because that is kind of your, you know, wh where you're kind of uh, looking at specifically, I think that we get really lonely. I know that, you know, sitting at home, my family all leaves. We've, we've got kids the same ages. Uh -huh, we figure yes. that out. But, you know, my husband's gone. My kids are gone. So I'm there with the dogs. And, of course, I'm talking to my clients all day. But the the lack of physical presence with, like, a work or, you know, it is really important, I find, for myself 
to collaborate, to Mm -hmm. get myself out, to go and, you know, meet up with business people, coaches, friends, because Uh uh, we really do need a physical connection with people. Yes. There's something so different. There's even with you and I so different. I mean, we've been, you know, Instagram friends and going back and forth, but it's so different being able to sit in the room with you. Mm-hmm. Right. Yes. I love your energy. So I just fun. Love, and we are both wearing red lipstick. Right. Like, how did this happen? I, I had know. like pink lipstick earlier and today. And a little bit of red. And I didn't yes. go all red with my nails, but <laughs> Zeal was on oh, Instagram saying like, I'm, I'm trying to do my nails like a pink, but the red keeps calling me. Yes. And I was like, girl, I feel you. <laughs> Okay, so I want to kind of switch to some personal things really fast because I'm always so interested and curious about what are your goals right now? What are you working on that you're really excited about? Yes, thank you for asking. I am working on fulfilling my mission. So what I shared with you guys is exactly the work that I'm doing because for the longest time was very scary. For the longest time, I didn't think that I could truly be successful as a coach within the Brazilian community and within the American community as well. So I'm a bilingual coach now and I'm embracing it. So I'm creating a program for Brazilians where I can coach them, I can coach those women, the immigrants, and it's mindset coaching because they're here working sub jobs and there were doctors and lawyers and you know, we all had lives back in our countries I had a really good job before I came here. And a lot of us who emigrate, we we were educated people there. And we are here doing jobs that really are way below our qualifications. And a lot of those women, they don't believe they can do more, they can achieve more, even though they have the background, because it's a new country. Maybe the language, you know, there is a barrier. So I'm embracing that right now, while I'm also pivoting my business program into including more intuition and belief work. So I'm in the background of the business right now, Mm -hmm. giving myself time to listen to that intuition and to build, to then, you know, launch launch a group program. I love that. Mm -hmm. What a powerful group to be able to serve. You know, um, my dad's a dentist, and I remember one of our assistants that we hired was from Brazil. And... uh, and her name's her name was Anna. I loved her. We had a really great fun time together. But I remember when she first started that first day, I said, So Anna, tell me about yourself. And she said, Well, I was a dentist in Brazil. And I was like, Why are you assisting? And she said, It doesn't translate. She said, I, I want to be, I and I want to go to school, but she's like, it's so hard going from having a thriving practice where I was in charge, I was, you know, bringing in patients and doing all the care and all of this to then go to my American dream where I'm not being supported with the actual thing that I know how to do. Mm. And so as you were talking about that, I just thought of Anna and thought, oh, wow, this is so needed. Yes. Because she did. She went back to school and, you know, uh, became a dentist in the U.S. But I remember those days of having, you know, conversations about how hard it was Uh to be like, why am I here? I have this back in Brazil, but I know that I'm supposed to be here. But I remember just mindset of like, am I worth it? Did I do it? Am Mm -hmm. I qualified? And every time that we, she'd kind of talk about that, just kind of spinning into like, yeah, yeah, I really Uh am a dentist. (laughs) (laughs) Even though everything around me tells me no right now, she's like, Uh I really am qualified enough to do this. Now I just need to jump through some of these hoops. So yeah, so excited for that group. That's going to be so amazing. Yes, I'm so excited and I'm embracing it. And I had to grow through the process as well. Mm -hmm. And for everybody who's listening right now, this applies to anybody's coaching business, Carrie. Mm -hmm. Because... I think we are so alike in a sense of the questions that come up, right? As think about your client. Your client's probably thinking, can I really do this? Am I qualified, right? Can I achieve what I want to achieve? This is very common, whether you are an immigrant Mm -hmm. and came here and you're trying to get to the next level, or if you're an American. Mm -hmm. So I think this really applies to any coaching business as we support our clients and hold space for them to help them get 
to the next level, whatever that well, is. Well, and that mindset, like you mentioned, you know, being able to do mindset and belief work is so powerful because so often we want to go to the how, uh -huh. you know, how do I start a podcast? How do I... And it's like, that's not the right question. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> The right question is like, why are you asking that question in the first place? And then it's like, I don't know how, I'm not qualified. I'm, you know, who am I to do this? The other one that I see come up a lot with coaches is that going back to who they want to coach and then saying like, I don't know if people will pay for this mm -hmm. or, you know, uh, there's not a big enough market for this. And I'm always like, if you feel called to it um, and you and I both, both are Christ-centered uh -huh. families, individuals. And I really believe that all of our desires, mm -hmm. those goodly desires of who we want to help and what we want to do in this life are actually given to us from God. Mm -hmm. And so that's always what I tell people is I you know, come back to like, if you know that that's who you are supposed to be helping and you have that desire, what if we believe that God was on our side with it too? Yes, I love it. I love it. And that just adds a whole other layer mm -hmm. to this whole thing. Because I would not be here if it wasn't for the belief in God. And if it wasn't for the belief that he's ahead of me, that the mm -hmm. path is already prepared, that he gave me a mission. And he gave each one of us a mission to accomplish here. And I believe that coaching is a God-given calling. That's what I believe. That's what I've believed from the beginning. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. when this work called me, I could not sleep until I answered the call. And it was annoying because <laughs> I was trying to put this aside yes. and not look and say, no, I'm good. I'm, I'm raising my kids. You know, I had a marketing job. I'm doing my job. I, and the work kept calling me, kept calling me mm -hmm. until the day that I said, all right, let's do this because I cannot run from this anymore. Yeah. And it is God given. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And so I'm so excited for everybody that gets to go to the conference. They're in for a treat listening to you speak. Um, how can people find you um, out in the world? Where can people find more of you, Zil? Yes, on Instagram. I hang out on Instagram. Me it's too. The only it's my jam. I'm there. <laughs> yes. Awesome. And so, for any of the coaches that are really looking to up level their business, um, kind of tell them a little bit about what it's like to work with you. Yes, to work with me is you come with your vision, you come with your dream, you come with you know whatever whatever bumps on the road you have encountered, bring it all, bring it all. And we're going to build whatever you want to build. And we're going to build it your way. So yes, I can mentor you as well, but I don't want you to be zeal. I don't want you to do it my way because then I would make you become more like zeal than more like you. So my goal is to help you be so fierce and raise your self-trust that you can build your business your way, right? Maybe you do want to wake up like me at 4.35 in the morning. Maybe you don't. Maybe you want to take clients from noon to 5 or from 5 to 10. Mm -hmm. You know, there are plenty of people who'd love to be coached oh, yeah. tonight. Oh, yeah, for sure. Perhaps you don't want to spend money on Facebook ads, mm -hmm. And there is another way you can do your marketing. So I believe in my clients way more than they believe in themselves. And that's my job. I believe in them and whatever, whatever they bring is never like a crazy idea. And my job as, a, as their coach is to show them their blind spots truly and to pull the curtains for their future mm. so they can see how like in a year, how things can be for them once they build this that self-trust and follow their intuition and drop the cookie cutter methods that we find out there. I love that so much. Well, anybody that gets to work with Zill is in for a treat. Aww. You're definitely going to want to check her out. This has been so much fun. Thank you, Carrie. Thank you so much for making the time while you're here in Utah to come and talk with me. Uh, we're definitely going to have to continue this conversation, my friend. So yes, let's go to the Brazilian restaurant. Let's do Get it. Some it's time. It's time. <laughs> Thank you.
thank you so much for having yeah, me. Yeah, and thanks everybody for being here. If you want to check out Zill, definitely check her out on Instagram and we'll see you next time. Bye. Thanks for listening to this podcast episode. If you're ready to get in the driver's seat of your own life, you can come and follow me at Drive Your Thoughts Coaching on Instagram or come and see more ways to work with me at driveyourthoughts.com. Yeah, whether ready or not, life's coming hard, no breaks, no stop. And if you put me on the spot, don't get it twisted, I never drop. If you feel a bit out of control and out the box, here's a way that you could drive your thoughts. Turn this podcast on, it's a lock. Kerry Marshall on the clock.